Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp. We are talking about the fundamentals of testing here where we are in chapter one, talking about the basics of software testing and continuing ahead with our next segment, which is 1.4, the test process. And this is going to be very detailed and we'll be talking about each and every phase in very detailed way so that you understand what exactly happens as a part of each particular phase. So the tutorial number one, we're talking about the first phase here, which is the test planning. In our previous tutorial, we covered that what exactly is the overall context of test process is all about and what kind of factors you can take into account in order to define your overall test process. Now, the test process comprises of several phases, which needs to be well defined and performed. Now, the very first phase we are talking about is test planning. Now, the very important thing to understand that test planning is not every QA responsibility. Like every software test engineer does not participate or perform the process of test planning. Now here, the test manager or a lead representing as a test manager of your project will be responsible for doing the entire test planning of the project. Now, this test planning consists of several important activities. For example, determining the scope and risk and identifying the objects of testing, defining the overall approach of testing. Now, just talking about these two particular points, we are saying that determining the scope, that what is that your testing process is required to conduct and achieve as a part of the testing life cycle, because not everything falls under your scope every time. For example, if I'm talking about the functional and non-functional testing, there are certain you know categories which we'll be covering in our upcoming tutorials. We are talking about the functional like unit integration, system and acceptance testing, whereas non-functional like security, performance, usability, etc. So not all the non-functional levels will be in your scope. Sometimes the client does it yourself, uh, themselves, or maybe gives it to someone external or any other vendor who are specialized in doing that to perform the same, right? So you determine the scope of the project, the various risks. Again, we'll be talking in detail about these things at a later point of time, but risk is an uncertainty which may impact your work in progress. So you identify the risk areas of testing specifically that what could be blocking your testing activities at any point of time. Identifying the objective of testing, that means what are your end goals, which defines that testing is completed. That means you should have some goals or objectives defined for testing that why are you testing this particular system. At the end, when you meet those expectations, you can say the testing is complete and we can hand over the product to the business. Point number two, defining the overall approach of testing. Here we are talking about the strategy. It's not that the two different projects will be tested in the same manner. Recalling a quick point from the principles of testing, that testing is context dependent. And that does not simply mean that two different projects can be tested with the same approach. So determining the overall approach of the testing lifecycle is what we also define as a part of the test planning. The schedule of say several activities because all the activities happening after the test planning as a part of the test process, including writing the test cases, prioritizing test cases, executions of the test cases, all these will be well determined with a schedule that this is where we expect this activity to get started. And these are the people who are responsible for it. So assigning resources for the activities, because without having the allocations of the team members, you really don't know if you will be able to complete these work within that timeline or not. So there will be, you know, set of items, set of people, set of work product, which will be required, which you all set it up or plan right here. Defining the amount detail template for the documentations. That means all sort of documentation which you will be producing as a part of the testing life cycle will be defined here. The template for it, if you're calling any particular ISO or IEEE standard specific items, then you need to make sure that you adhere to their template. And the templates will be used for several work products right from here. 
The test planning is also a document. So you populate a document being called as test plan. Then you have test strategy, you have test cases, you have test execution report, you have your defect report, test summary report, and many more, right? So you define the amount of documentation, the detail of each selected documentation, and the template to be followed for this documentation right here during the test planning phase. Selecting matrices for monitoring and control. The next phase we'll be talking about in detail that what exactly monitoring and control is all about, but this monitoring is a process of measuring the ongoing progress on the life cycle. And that is done with help of a matrix. Matrix is some type of calculations which gives you a desired figure numbers in return to tell you that are you following the plan or you are getting deviated from the plan. If you have a deviation, you take the control action, right? Again, someone like test manager has the understanding and experience to determine that what kind of matrices will be required. Moreover, we say here, we are talking about selecting the matrices, which simply means that we are not having anything fixed. That means we have n number of matrices available and we just want to give you an op option that you select what is that which is more relevant to your set of activities because we have 100 plus matrices available to measure different entity and different work products. But the point is, what is that your project requires to keep an eye on? So you don't select all 100 of them to be monitored every time. You define your KPIs, you define your milestones, and based on that, you have your set of matrices which you would require to be kept an eye on. Defining entry and exit criteria, which simply means that we're talking about when we can decide to start a particular process or a particular phase of the testing lifecycle, and when we can decide that it's time we can stop this activity now. Right, So we will be defining set of criteria which will determine when to start a process or when to start a phase and same way when to stop a particular process or when to stop a particular phase. When I'm repeating the words phases and process, it simply means that an entry and exit criteria can exist for overall testing lifecycle and within the testing lifecycle for each test level like unit testing, integration testing, system testing, you may have independent entry and exit criteria as well. It's always good to have entry and exit criteria, which determines that have you done what you were supposed to do before starting and before stopping. The final thing to talk about is deciding the about automation, because you certainly may have scope of automation, if your project or your business demands you to have automated test suite, at least for the regression testing, then you would decide about the automation percentage or the scope of automation work in your project right at the test planning level. This would help you to identify the need of a test tool, the training and mentorship for the team members to ramp up to meet the expectation of automation of you of already have the skill set available within your team members to perform automation, then you can decide the budget on these exercises, right? So given that you have some scope of automation in your project, you will decide on the automation percentage and the tools and required infrastructure on it. Also look forward to have the training and mentorship needs to ramp up the team to deliver the same. And certainly there will be many more detailed activities which will be happening under these options. So it's just not that what we discussed is everything about test planning. We are just getting started team. You will slowly understand a lot of things in detail. As you gain understanding at this point, you can later jump into a test manager level and get experience about it. And you can understand the test planning is pretty huge than what we are talking right now. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.